Well, joining us now from Brussels to talk more about the challenges facing Eurozone policymakers is Philippe Yezels. He's from BMP Paribas Fortis Global Markets. Philippe, thanks very much for being with us. So tell me, is Italy now the next major crisis for the euro? Well, I think Italy is in a much better shape, I would say, than uh, some of the other perfect countries, so that's uh, good news. And there was a little bit of uncertainty about the budget, of course, because some time ago it was agreed, and then uh, a couple of days uh, before today they, they started discussing about uh, the details once again. But yesterday they were once again flying some rumors that uh, they have my, it reached an agreement. Uh, we have not the details as of yet, but, but still I think uh, this will pass fairly quickly and that should take uh, quite a bit of, of the risk uh, of the table in the short run. Philippe, why do you say that Italy is in better shape than, than some of the others that, that haven't already had, had a bailout? It's got 120 percent debt to GDP, it's got a quarter of all the debt in the Eurozone, and the economy hardly grows. Yeah, that's, that's indeed uh, the, the weak spots um, of the country. On the other hand, too, we should not forget that Italy is a, is a rich country. We talk about two trillion euros, a bit less of debt. But if you look at the total assets of the population, it's about eight trillion, but that's not that bad. And if you look at that budget, they aim to, to, to balance the budget in 2013, where quite a bit of other countries uh, are looking to have a shortfall of about three percent. So in this respect, uh, this is certainly not that bad, of course, that that's 120 percent almost but if you can balance the budget and you can grow a little bit um, you can bring this uh, figure down to 100 and lower um, over a number of years you're totally right I think that the, the weak growth level of about 1% over the last couple of years on average is, is weaker than the rest of the eurozone and, and that's a point of concern and therefore we also look in, into the new uh, plan to have some structural reforms maybe to, to put that growth level at a bit of a higher, uh, higher ground if only uh, the Italians could get people to pay their taxes. I mean, you say that the key here is structural reforms, but a lot of people are looking at this austerity package that's been watered down and saying, actually, this isn't going to structurally change the Italian economy. Well, it, it's never 100% uh, what you want in, in these uh, circumstances, and that's not, uh, not unique to Italy. Um, I think that governments in Europe are uh, up for a very tough job at the moment because you clearly have to bring these debt levels down. That's not, not only Italy, that's other countries as well. And that means that you have to increase taxes or you have to cut spending. And that's always very difficult. And each political party, of course, tries to please his own voters and tries to convince them that they get a better deal of it. And that makes it quite difficult. That's the same in Belgium. That's the same in many other countries. And on top of that, uh, these structural reforms um, will come. And the the paradox um, of this is that this is very hard to sell to the voters because we always said it's not only about economics, it's a lot about politics and about voters, but as the crisis uh, gets right. worse and the markets go down, uh, people are more uh, convinced to, to take the measures probably they, that are needed. So Europe saw 0.2% growth in the second quarter as these austerity measures uh, bit into growth here. Where do you see the chances of a euro area recession? And do you think the ECB should cut rates? Well, uh, we have at the moment a mild recession penciled in for, for the U.S., not one for Europe. But that said, there is, we know that the, the growth in Europe will be very uh, unevenly distributed. So some parts, like Germany, will still be much stronger. And some uh, parts, like the periphery, will see weaker growth than sometimes recession. And that is clearly also a consequence of the fact uh, that uh, they put the austerity measure in place so that that will weigh on growth. We know that. And therefore, it's, of course, very good news if the... Uh, ECB, also the Federal Reserve, would support this very difficult exercise by, uh, by putting money in the system. And that's not something you like in the long run because it can create inflation. But in this situation where you know that the austerity measures will clearly eat into economic growth and will, will make it very difficult, uh, it would be very helpful, I would say. Philippe Yezels there of BNP Paribas Fortis Global Markets, not yet pricing in or penciling in rather a recession in Europe.